what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video and we're gonna check out 11 fans who are banned from wwe forever by none other than wrestlemania i got it this time y'all because last time i was trying to read his name and i was just botching that completely i don't know how i messed that up but shout out to wrestlemania man i've actually been checking his content for a few years i just never like actually you know thought of reacting to it you know what i'm saying but it seems like you guys would be interested on my takes on some of his videos and stuff like that if you guys want me to react to more of his videos make sure you know what i'm saying you hit the like button and let me know hey y'all want me to check out more wrestlemania's clips and stuff like that and i definitely will so this should be an interesting one man there have been times where fans get a little bit overzealous and wwe has to ban them you know so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support roll to 40k and let's do this thing Batista getting... i remember that Wrestling can create powerful emotions in fans. They invest heavily into that. wrestlers in their storylines. However, on some occasions, fans take things a bit too far yeah. and decide Whoa. to place their unwarranted hands on a wrestler. A big no-no in the world of professional wrestling. <laughs> and there is a big mistake from a fan. A <laughs> he thought he was going to get some love. They start beating his ass. Get your ass out this ring. They take wrestlers take that as the ultimate sign of disrespect. Don't come into their ring unless you're invited by management or somebody backstage or even somebody in the ring or something like that. Do not come inside the squared circle. They that's a sacred place. That's where they work. That's what they're doing to entertain you guys, to entertain us all. And someone just comes out there and hops in the ring. You think it's going to be cool and pleasant. No, you're going to end up like this guy thinking he was going to get some love. And then they they legit start beating his ass. Mistake from a fan. A big mistake. Join us now as WrestleMania <laughs> looks at 11 times fans were banned from WWE shows. That's funny, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. That's funny. He was getting his Ass beat. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. You know what? Since I have been watching WrestleMania for a few years and I haven't subscribed, I'm sorry. I'm doing this right now. Subscribing and hitting the post noty, bro. Because he makes some pretty good content. I just never thought to subscribe, you know. But I am definitely going to do that now because he does make some good content. And you guys should as well. What the we hell? Have someone in the ring, and I don't, I believe that may be <laughs> a fan. Number one, Triple H defends Stone Cold Steve I know Austin. this clip. I've seen Long this clip before. Long before camera phones existed, a fan in Germany won a contest for a meet and greet at a WWF live event, believed to have taken place sometime in the late 90s, probably 1997. The fan filmed mm -hmm. another fan running into the ring after Stone Cold Steve Austin defeated Triple H, or as he was known at the time, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yep. Triple H looked dead on the mat apron, but he suddenly sprang to life, suplexing the fan yep. down hard while mm -hmm. the referee stomped a mud hole into the foolish fan <laughs> and walked it dry. This is he was beating his ass, and I like, uh, I believe it's a old little soundbite of um stone cold talking about it like on some type of radio show or maybe it was his podcast but he was talking about this incident and he didn't know what the hell was going on and all of a sudden triple h supposed to be selling the stunner gets up suplex him starts beating his ass the referee starts beating his ass that was great man one time that Triple H broke kayfabe but yeah. didn't land him in hot water backstage, unlike 1996's curtain call. Yep. Number two, a low blow out of nowhere. Now during a live event in South Africa, Randy Orton was posing in a ring, standing on the second rope, when a fan raced into the ring and oh. delivered a low blow to the legend killer. What the hell? What's? Come on, bro. What are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing, bro? What? Oh! What? What the hell is this? Despite the attack, Orton was able to get in one or two shots on his assailant. That wasn't a work, no? No, no. We pressed charges and the guy's in jail still. However, after the run-in, wow. speculation arose that the entire situation may have been a publicity stunt as it was revealed Orton's attacker was a local wrestler who performed as Black Smith. I'm off the dead. 
and I will get it because in everything I do in this world, I keep on shining, somebody. Blacksmith subsequently cut a YouTube promo on Orton, getting his 15 minutes of fame and 10 views. Number three, a fan knocks Eddie Guerrero off a ladder. RP Eddie, man. Ladder matches are dangerous enough yes, as they, they are. are with the match being worked, but when a fan gets involved, all bets are off. During a 2002 episode of Monday Night Raw, Ooh. Eddie Guerrero battled Rob Van Dam in an exciting ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship that almost turned deadly for Latino Heat. This is when the Intercontinental Championship was definitely a championship that a lot of wrestlers and a lot of people viewed as the next up. Like, if you won the Intercontinental Championship, you was deemed as the next person up to potentially win a world championship. I really wish they bring that type of prestige to the Intercontinental Championship. They have. They've, they're they trying to with Apollo Crews and his run and what they did with Big E. I do like that. So, if they can continue that momentum, make it one of those belts that are highly sought after, just like the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship. So, Heat. Whoa. What the... <laughs> I like how the ref held him so Eddie can give him a legit, a legit punch to the face. What the hell, bro? That could have been really bad for Eddie at that time. Like, what the? What? The Come fan on. dashed into the ring, tipping wow. the ladder over and sending Guerrero down to the mat, where he was able to land on his feet but like yeah. a cat. My first thought was, can I forget something? You know, and then I look at it and I kind of see that jersey he was wearing. Guerrero went after the idiot intruder, <laughs> who WWE officials managed to get out of the ring before Eddie knocked some sense into him. And I saw it was a fan, and then I got hot. Oh and yeah. Threw a punch. Just a little reminder not to come back in. Number four, RB CM Punk Eddie, fights man. off a crowd. Rest the days when fans charged the ring and tried to seriously injure wrestlers may be over, but on one night, CM Punk took a trip through the pass when he exited through the crowd and found himself swarmed by fans. Mm. The straight edge superstar was working heel at the time and he was trying to get into a position on the stairs so he could work a promo with Mr. McMahon on the 10th July this. 2012 edition of Raw. The problem was that the fans decided to reach out to Punk and at one time a fan nudged Punk leading to a dangerous situation oh. where he might have tumbled down the stairs. After several fans kept slapping Punk's back and nudging him, he oh. turned around and elbowed a fan right in the mush. The problem was it apparently wasn't the fan who had yeah, provoked it was, him. Oh. The video shows what appears to be Schmidt touching the back of Punk's head. But take yeah, it wasn't him. I remember this. This caused some, some actual controversy because... There was other people that was pushing him and hitting him, but the guy behind him, he wasn't even doing. He was just like, you know, just recording everything. And then Punk turned around and smacked the hell out of him, and it wasn't even him. So I remember this when they were, this was like on, like, talked about on news stations and stuff. Take a closer look. The hand of another person actually yeah. punches the wrestler's head. With so many people around him, it's easy to see why things broke down. Mm -hmm. Security failed to protect Punk, and Punk may have been better just getting out of the situation. The angle could have always been reshot, after all. Punk would comment on the situation with WWE.com saying, I think the whole situation sucks. It's an unfortunate and isolated incident. I was up in the stand surrounded. So Welcome to StockX. The yeah, man, that, that was just, they could have planned that a little bit better. He said, let's push him down the stairs. Got hit in the rib three times. I was getting shoved and I was getting punched. Then I started getting tagged in the back of the head. Unfortunately, I lashed out in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I'm really just glad nobody was hurt. Thankfully, Punk wasn't injured either. Number five, a fan <laughs> tries to run in and hug John Cena. <laughs> John Cena the is device loved of by some and hated by others, Facts. as seen after the 12th July 2010 episode of Raw when it went off the air. A fan filmed what appears to be a teenage girl running into the ring and trying to get her hands on Cena. It's unknown whether she was down for some hugging or for some mugging, but security wow. quickly grabbed her after Cena appeared to detain her momentarily. Wow. This would by no means be the most bizarre fan incident with Cena <laughs> as we'll so soon. It's difficult to tell if this was just a lovesick fan or an ardent Cena hater. The problem with all of these situations is that wrestlers or security can't take those chances nah, because can't. what looks harmless could turn deadly. 
Yep. Yeah, the arm, go, the arm security still around the. Uh... Number six, Eggman <laughs> joins the Shield. Oh, I remember <laughs> this one. I remember this one. This one was funny, bro. This one was funny, yo. Fifteen's Night of Champions. I remember this one. A six-man tag match between the Wyatt oh, family man. and Chris Jericho alongside the Shield's Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. Perhaps feeling Jericho wasn't up to the task at hand, a fan entered the ring ready to join the Shield. He had on the tactical pants. That's what made it funny, bro. He had on a tactical vest. He was like, yo, bro, y'all ready to take out the Wyatt family? <laughs> that was actually funny, man. Unfortunately, security had other ideas and he was quickly taken out of the ring. In hindsight, the fan may have been right as Jericho ended up submitting to Braun Strowman during the match. Number seven, <laughs> Seth Rollins. <laughs> Seth Rollins must know how to get some good heel heat, either that or he's just a natural born weirdness magnet, attracting over the edge fans whenever he shows up. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at some of the Monday Night Messiah's greatest unwanted interactions with fans. First starting with the 7th September 2015 <laughs> Raw. Now, during this time, Seth Rollins was on a roll in the WWE, holding mm -hmm. both the United States Championship and WWE World Heavyweight good Championship, time, time. when he prepared to team up with The New Day against John Cena, Titus O'Neil, and Darren Young. A fan must have wanted his brush with greatness as he snuck over the barricade during... People don't remember The New Day. They were heels. At the time, they were heels. Seth's entrance, walking alongside the champion for a few moments. <laughs> uh, that was such a good time him holding the united states championship and the wwe championship at the same time was pretty cool counting the lights for security another moment happened on the 15th august 2016 raw finn balor i am the face of your failure this is when seth called out finn balor before the SummerSlam match but then a fan jumped the barricade and entered the ring only to get pushed back by rollins and quickly dispatched <laughs> by wwe security number eight dean ambrose as we've seen and we'll see later fans just love messing with the shield in yep. 2015 dean ambrose was walking the aisle at the smackdown taping at providence rhode island's dunkin donuts center when a fan rushed towards him the problem was that Ambrose's back was to the yeah. fan and he could have been blindsided. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, a security official was able to tackle Ooh. the fan down. The fan had something in their hand and things could have been dire yeah. if it wasn't for security actually doing their job. That's Number 9, security who's did NXT. Job. A 2017 uh, NXT live event featured a match between the undisputed... That, that person uh, that was right by Ambrose, or, you know, his name was called Ambrose at the time. Um, he did his job, man, because... When someone's back is turned, you don't know. So he could have had a weapon. Who knows? But that's what security's there for, to make sure incidents like that don't escalate to something worse. Tadera and the team of Heavy Machinery and Cassius Ono and a fan. Once again, a fan decided to make himself famous, this time running in on the black and gold brand. Undisputed Era member Kyle O'Reilly wasn't suffering fools that night and made short work of the foolish fan, kicking him in the face before security took Damn. the fan away. Number 10, Paul Bearer. Cause I was standing over the graveside of your mother and father. In 1997, Paul Bearer was feuding with The Undertaker. Bearer would bring in Kane and proclaim that The Undertaker was responsible for his parents' death, making Bearer even more hated than when he betrayed the Not gonna lie to you, I used to be afraid of Kane and The Undertaker as a kid. Ah, oh, they scared the hell out of me. Dead man by siding with mankind. Oh, stop that! Stop that! That's hideous! <laughs> One fan seemed determined to dish out the punishment as Bera found out during an episode of Raw when she dove at him. Who is this idiot? There's some fans. There oh, wow. The fan grabbed at Bera's feet and he eventually lost his balance, falling down on the protective mats outside the ring. What the hell? 11, Roman Reigns gets bonked with a briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> Classic moment, classic the moment in Money in the Bank. The briefcase has been weaponized by more bank. than one wrestler. But what happens when a WWE fan decides to use it with ill intent? 
In August 2015, Roman Reigns was wrestling Bray Wyatt at a live event in Victoria, British Columbia, when a fan decided to take his replica Money in the Bank briefcase oh. and throw it straight at Reigns in the ring. Wow. The briefcase hit Reigns in the back of the head, with fans who saw it claiming Reigns was momentarily stunned. Victoria Police spokesperson Sergeant Brian Edwards commented on what happened to the attacker. No one was hurt and no charges were laid after an apology was given by the fan. The 31-year-old male has been banned from any WWE wrestling shows in the future. Wow, bro. You too old to be doing that, man. Like that, even though it's a replica still, you're throwing like a, a, a pretty solid object at the back of someone's head that's not even preparing for it. You know, that can that can definitely cause some injuries and, you know, some concussions type like deals. Like you got to be careful with that, man. But hey. This was crazy, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to see how fans can sometimes take it a little bit too far and, and try to get involved in the matches and stuff. But at the same time, I do miss fans and I'm glad they're coming back soon. So can't wait for that. So comment down below. Let me know what other WrestleMania clips you want me to check out. I definitely will check them out for you guys. Make sure you just subscribe to his channel. Dope content creator he if you want to know anything about wrestling related stuff that's your guy so appreciate all love and support roads to 40k appreciate y'all kicking in with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace